the conclusion is that congratulations. Uh, <laughs> <laughs>
Uh, let me just do a bit of tweaking here. All right. Okay, here we go. Hello, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining me again. Hope all of you can hear me clearly. Please kindly comment in the comment column if all of you can hear me clearly, loud and clear. Please kindly comment in the comment column. Uh, very good afternoon to all of you. I'm Dr. Tawa. Um, very good to be here and very good to join back and, you know, as usual, teach online. So um, let's wait for some comments if my, uh, if my voice is loud and clear. Fantastic. Thank you, Mazni. Thanks a lot. Very good afternoon to uh, Fadila. Everyone else, is it loud and clear? Okay, so the comments are coming in now. Okay, very well. So, um, very good to be back. I'm very, very glad uh, after quite some time now. Uh, took a bit of break uh, because I was very, very busy with direct lectures at university. So I'm very glad to be back now. Um, so there is some issue with uh, uh, Facebook uh, live um, session ongoing. I mean, the streaming is not very stable. I don't know why. Uh, but anyway, uh, here we are now specifically focusing on a topic that is going to cover systematic review databases all right so but before we get started how are you all how's everything with you guys how's your uh, research journey going how's your progress so far um how's your phd or how's your masters please do comment in the comment column let's let's uh, let's let's have some conversation to see how everything is going on your side on your end whether you're progressing, how's your research proposal going, how's your research thesis going, how are your papers. Um, yes, Kairun. Um, well, I miss all of you too. Okay, it's been some time. Um, specifically, I definitely miss you too. Kairun, that's very nice of you to say. Um, so, um, okay, Raj is here struggling with literature review. Okay, um, that's pretty usual. Don't worry about it. Uh, if you don't struggle, then that is not PhD anyway. Okay, so don't worry about it. That's why I'm here trying to help as much as I can, trying to um, assist you guys, trying to support in the very, very niche and specific areas where uh, very hard to find um, um, important answers. Okay, that's what I'm trying to provide. Um, so Daya, as usual, super, super multitasking doctor. Yes, uh, multitasking is for everyone. I believe, you. I hope your multitasking is going on well. I uh, wish you all the best. So how about everyone else? Okay. So um, for those who have joined us for the first time or for those who have always joined us, the very simple thing that you need to go before we get started is to make sure hit the like button. Make sure you hit the share button. Share it across um, your profile. Any other groups for that matter, just a quick share. Hit the share and just share it on your profile. And make sure, make sure, make sure, make sure tag, tag your friends in the comment column. That is the most and utmost important thing from you, okay? So please make sure that you tag your friends in the comment column so that they will be able to come and join in later and watch what went on today, okay? So at least they don't miss out uh, whatever we're going to learn today, all right? So do a favor, hit the click like button, give a light tap on the share button, share it across the board, wherever you want to share. You can even share, you know, what if, if you click the share button, there'll be like copy link. You can even share it on your WhatsApp group groups or telegram groups and so on uh, and don't forget to tag your friends in the comment column all right okay so um daya me almost at literature review and but stuck with last team okay i wish you all the best daya okay let's see how today's session is going to help all of you all right so today we have specifically uh, 13 parts to go through all right uh, not a very long class hopefully uh, all of us are busy i don't want to waste your time so uh, let's get started uh, today we are at episode 105, okay, 105 already. Um, so let's see what we have, okay. For um, for those who always frequently join my Facebook live classes, just to let you know, I don't have live classes as frequently as last year because last year I had far little commitments uh, with direct university talks compared to this year. This year I have talks until year end, okay. So unfortunately, I cannot have as many classes as I used to do, but I still have good things for you. So, so far, you have already completed 14 steps to systematic review. We had a very good class with Dr. Tahira. I think most of you were very well inspired because of uh, due to that class. Um, today, we are going to look at all databases for systematic review, as many as I can cover. I'll share some of it as well. 
Um, next one will be 4th of April. There is some gap, okay? Designing instrument or questionnaire, okay? So I have to get prepared for that class as well. So you can see that coming soon. These are all done. And today is what we are going to cover live class, okay? And then 18th of April, we're going to look into how to complete, how to structure a complete thesis. Followed by 11th of May, we're going to look at right approach to start PhD proposal. Very good afternoon, my friend. Thanks for joining. Um, 12th of May, how to graduate before time. And 30th of May, seven easy steps to write problem statement. Okay. So we have very well covered until uh, mid of the year, until 30th or 30th of May, we have some important classes coming up. And uh, once I approach May, I might be designing a few more classes for the um, better half of this year. All right. Okay. So um, let's get started now, all of you. Which is your preferred database for literature search? Okay, where do you go and search? Do you go Google Scholar or do you go uh, um, Clarivate? Do you go Scopus? Do you go Springer? Do you go uh, PubMed or do you go um, any other sources? Please do comment in the comment column. Which is your preferred database for literature search and why? Why would that be your preferred site? Okay, so let's wait for some answers. So Rajesh said Scopus, very well. For those who are going to answer, don't forget in the comment column, start tagging your friends. Okay, just press add button and tag your friends. Okay, and make sure you hit the share button and hit the like button as well. Okay, so then we have um, um, Aisha who said Scopus. Okay, thank you, Aisha. This is Aisha, Aisha Abdul Rauf. Thank you for tagging your friends. Continuously tag your friends. Invite them to come and join. Okay, all right. So we have Scopus, Scopus. Anyone else? What is your preferred database for literature search? Is it Scopus? Is it Clarivate? Is it Google Scholar? Is it Springer? What would be your preferred? So I can see majority of them are referring to Scopus, which is fine. Okay, then we have a Google Scholar manually. Okay, very good. That's old school. I just use Google Scholar only. Can I? Fadila. I can tell you something. Google Scholar is by far the best platform to use. Yes, when you do systematic review, they say you must use all the sources. You must include Clarivate, you must include Scopus, you must include Springer, you must include PubMed. If you're doing medical, uh, you must include Google Scholar and you must include um, everything else there is. But honestly, the most comprehensive and the most complete database is google scholar you can literally find everything in google scholar it's just like a like a like a like a like a gold mine or rubbish bin whichever way you look at it you can actually find a lot of sources there okay all right so um that is one way to go then we have PubMed. okay that's medical very well scopus google scopus google and we have ieee Okay, I used to use IEEE as well, but I normally get IEEE directly from Google Scholar, but you can also use IEEE Explore. IEEE Explore nowadays is a bit more open. During my days when I was doing PhD, uh, I used to be more engineering, but now they are kind of education, social science, IEEE access is open. You know, it's, it's also quite, quite, quite uh, comprehensive. Um, I can see more, more Google Scholar coming up. Science Direct, very well. Science Direct is what I, re I refer to Springer. Thank you very much. Um, but then be careful. Science Direct might not be very comprehensive. Okay. So that is something you must be very, very careful. Uh, Web of Science also. Uh, the problem with Web of Science is that it only shows Web of Science Journal, which is good. I'm not saying it's wrong. But sometimes if you cannot find that specific journal that you want, you might not be able to... to I mean, if let's say you're doing Web of Science search, you're doing an exhaustive search and you cannot find the right journal that you want, it's probably because that journal that you're trying to find is not indexed in Web of Science, okay? It's probably only Scopus or probably never indexed or probably in ANA, probably in somewhere else, okay? So don't only stick to Web of... It's good. Web of Science is like the Ferrari of, of database, but sometimes you do want some Toyota and, 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 and BMW and so on, right? So it is what it is, okay? Um, one Petro, okay, I've never heard of that, but that is something interesting I would like to explore as well. Thank you very much for tagging. This is what I want. So please, all of you, try to help your friends. Help out a bit here. Facebook is a very, very nasty platform. Everyone thinks it's very nice. It's actually quite good. But the way that they run Facebook is to block out information from people as much as possible so that uh, people like me, consultants, we have to pay and advertise. But Facebook Live, you can't do that. Okay, it's live. Okay, so it thrives based on how you guys are sharing, liking, and tagging your friends in the comment column. That is how we uh, 
uh, let people let this video to reach out to other people so do tag do like do share okay uh, all right so let's see what we have here all right so before we continue now it's a graduation phase many graduation ceremony is going on so congratulations to all of the uh, successful PhD and master's holders, of course, to undergraduate as well, but um, we are not there for, we're not here for that. We are here for master's and PhD postgraduate study. So on that note, I've had a lot of success during this graduation ceremony. Many of my known friends, consultees, um, close buddies, uh, um, acquaintance and so on, many of them actually graduated. Many of them actually made it, but these are two notable, important people that I want to highlight. The last class we had was with Dr. Tahira. And then I thought it was only Dr. Tahira that uh, we made her, I mean, we, 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 we uh, supported her as much as possible to enable her to graduate. But then I had one more, just recently graduated, Dr. Faisal uh, Mosin, 10 years of PhD as well and made it. Okay, so thank you very much for choosing our consulting and proofreading services. And then... We also have Dr. Ravi, okay, we also have Dr. Ravi down here, uh, who recently graduated from MMU, partially blind. Why I wanted to share? Because just to show that nothing should stop you from going further, okay? So we have people who is working for 10 years exhaustively and getting their PhD. We have a candidate who is partially blind and still never stopped and never stopped him from going further. And this is to motivate all of you that this is the time for you to push forward, okay? This graduation shouldn't make you, all these graduation ceremonies, all this hat and all the photos shouldn't make you feel bad. It should only make you go forward. Every time during my time in the UK when I was doing my PhD, every time there is graduation ceremony, I'll just, I'll just go down and stand and just look at them. Okay, that is how I actually get inspired and motivated. And I want to be there as soon as possible. That was my push factor. I want to be there as soon as possible. And I made it. Okay, and I'm very sure that you guys will make it as well. Okay. Take this as inspiration for you. Take this as motivation for you to move forward. All right? To move forward. Okay? So, a bit of shout out. Doesn't matter how long it takes. Doesn't matter what is your condition. Okay? Unless you're bedridden, then it's a different story. Okay? Then I'm very sorry for you. But still can do it. Okay? But never give up. You can do it too. All right? You can definitely do it too. That is the most important part, okay? Doesn't matter whether it's 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 graduate before time or graduate after time or graduate on time, all these things. If it works out graduate before time, good for you. Fantastic. If it's graduate on time, amazing. Good for you. Graduate after time, amazing as well. Doesn't really matter, okay? What is important is never, ever, ever, ever give up, okay? So on that note, let's get, let's continue. Now, I'm not sure if all of you are aware of my free templates that I've been uh, designing and providing to all of you. Okay, how many of you have actually used my free templates, literature review, uh, uh, summary sheet, literature review checklist, uh, literature review database, um, uh, liter uh, statistical database, where to go and find statistic information for motivation. How many of you here actually, uh, because the problem is when I post on Facebook, it limits the reach, so it doesn't actually reach out to many people. Whoever is on my Telegram, Okay, they uh, they managed to download. So who in the current audience, 321 people, who managed to go and download these documents and start using it? Okay, started who never who who never get access to this? Do let me know. I will tell you how to download. Okay, how to go and get this document. This is important for today because this uh, critical literature review checklist will tell you how to read a paper, how to uh, no sorry. Um, this checklist will tell you the reading requirement of literature review, the reading process of a literature review, and how to critically review a literature review, uh, a paper, okay? So we have some who actually accessed already, okay? No problem at all. I hope it is helpful to you guys. Who couldn't access, who never download yet? Please do comment in the comment column so that I can tell you. Um, Akin Remy, okay, fine, I'll tell you. Anyone else, please comment in the comment column. Who has not been able to access this document yet? Okay, so we have no role. Never get it yet, so I'm going to tell you how to get it. Please share again. I use your documents or request new researchers to use. Very good. Thank you very much, Ramesh. I appreciate that. Okay, come on, comment, comment. I need more comment. Okay, more spirit, more motivation. If you are driving, please don't. Okay, please don't comment. Just drive. Everything else that you're doing, please comment in the comment column. How many of you know? Because I want to see the Facebook analytics. When I post, does it actually reach people or not? 
All right, so that's that's a bit uh, that's a bit um, um, important for me. Okay, so um, Yuneshwari never, Noram Shida not yet, Tabo uh, haven't accessed. Who else have not accessed yet? Did not access me, Doctor Never, Doctor. Okay, anyone else? Anyone else? Okay, so what I'm going to tell you is you can access it in my uh, Telegram group. Okay, so if you go to my Telegram group right there. We have already hit 8,964 members, almost on the road to 9,000 members. So um, as soon as you reach uh, this group, let me just tell you where to click because it's up there. But I'm going to show you a shortcut. Uh, okay, let me just quickly share with you the database link, as, I mean Telegram link as well. Um, one moment, yeah. Let me just give you the link very quickly. Okay. I've shared the link in the chat box, okay? And let me just quickly tell you how you can download that link. This is a bit messed up with Telegram, um, but no problem. I can show you how to exactly download. Just give me a moment. Just give me one or two minutes while you click to uh, click that this this particular button here and join. Okay, you can click that and join. I can see people joining already. Uh, but let me quickly tell you where to download. That's quite a bit. Um, okay, here you go. Critical literature review. So let me just reply to this so you guys can quickly. Hit that and download. So you go there, you'll go there, and here it is. Okay, this is the uh, PNG file, image file. This is the Word document. You just click this, you can download. Okay, in case if you want to access all other templates, all other templates, just click the pinned message. Okay, click this pinned message, you'll be able to access all the templates. All right, so now for this, can I get some more tagging of people, please? Hit the share button. Hit the like button, share it across groups, Facebook page, Facebook group, your own profile, and make sure you tag your friends so they can come in and download this. We have about, I think now I have designed about seven or eight templates. I'm going to show some of it today. So join that link, the Telegram link, and go and download it from here. Okay, all right. So um, this basically, this it's 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 completely self-explanatory. So I don't need to go through each and every line. But what you can do is you can. From this, you can basically uh, check out uh, the reading process. Do you read minimum one paper per day or at least three papers per week? Do you choose papers from the highest impact factor? And so these are some of the uh, hints and tips for you to do, for you to perform or carry out when you're doing literature review. Then here is the flow of reading. Okay, so let me just rub this out. Flow of reading is basically, do you read starting from abstract? After abstract, do you analyze conclusion before jumping into main body? And next, do you move to problem statement and the remaining body of content? That is the flow of reading. So it go, should, should go at the top, the bottom, and then you read the rest. Okay. Here, critical review. This is the processes of critical review. I know some of you struggle and not sure sometimes what is exactly critical review. I have already given you the remarks. First question when you read the paper, ask yourself, is the paper worth reading or not? Have you asked yourself what exactly the author is trying to solve? So the moment you can answer this, okay what other authors are trying to solve then you'll be able to follow the rest on finding the research gap okay most of us cannot find research gap most of us cannot find research gap it's because sometimes we don't understand what we are reading true or not do you agree with me or not do you agree that sometimes when you read you don't exactly understand the paper which gives rise to your problem of critically reviewing that paper or that source or that literature is it true do you have difficulty understanding a paper sometimes is that the main reason that you cannot critically review a paper yes or no please answer in the comment column all right so let's give it some time yes so like what adila said yes doctor correct sometimes we are lost so when you're lost when you don't understand something you cannot criticize about it you cannot complain about it because when you complain about it that means you must thoroughly understand like how you want a restaurant to be clean you understand the significance of having a clean restaurant so you complain about it same thing goes to a paper if it's not clear to you if it's not concise to you 
then you have a problem of critically reviewing it. So the most important and foremost important thing for you is understand a paper. No matter what you do, you must understand the paper. Yes, doctor, sometimes you don't understand what I have read. Okay. So break it down section by section. Go through every theoretical aspect. Sometimes you need to fall back to books. Okay. You need to fall back to books to understand certain uh, uh, certain terms, certain phenomenology, certain things, you have to fall back to books as well. So sometimes it's not as easy as reading one paper in a day. It might take a few days before you understand everything about that paper. Okay, without it, you can never critically review a paper. Okay, all right? So I hope that is clear. Go and download this and go through this. You'll be having a better perspective of critical literature review checklist. Okay? Now, next thing. I've already given a Telegram link. We are also very active on Facebook group, Facebook page, and here is the list of all the classes that I've already conducted so far, uh, which you can go and join. Okay, all right. So let me see if I have all the links here. Um, I think I do. Okay, there you go. Okay, so I've given you all the links for you guys to access in case if you want to join my Facebook group, Facebook page, free classes, 105 classes so far, which you can go and access. Okay, completely free right so now this is another template i recently created today's class is all about this more or less okay whatever i can cover literature search databases okay i've already summarized literally all the databases where you can go and look for paper so today i've heard a lot uh, of people talking about clarivate a lot of people actually talk about scopus then i also have some people talking about google scholar and i have one or two talking about science direct uh, and then I have some talking about PubMed, okay? So that means the rest, okay, I have one spoke about IEEE Explore, okay, IEEE. So the rest, you have not explored yet. But there's so much more for you to explore, all right? So you have uh, RC, you have Ulrich, you have Directory of Open Access, you have JSTOR, all this, this database, this entire ones, let me just rub all of this off. This one is co covered under all subject databases, okay? This also I recently shared on Facebook, but as I, as I said, Facebook's algorithm is working such a way to block, to, to push down the reach, okay, so that more people will pay to advertise, unfortunately, all right? So these are all the database with all the links. Do you know where to download this document? This, the PDF file of this, do you know where to download? It's in my Telegram group. So just go back again. Keep clicking this pinned message you will come across this uh, checklist okay just keep clicking this okay just keep clicking 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 and you'll end up getting that particular uh, document all right so um, good luck to you all on downloading this and then medical databases is here you got eyesight and pubmed under engineering databases you have inspire help i triple explore imac under social science databases you have silo eric these are all specific specific databases all right okay so let's go to the next one okay now continuous literature review stages where do you actually conduct literature review okay so this is again going back to my 11 steps blueprint to get your phd and masters going can i tell you how successful is this framework well whoever follows this framework whoever follows my coaching guideline or consultancy program so far, or even proofreading stages, all of them are getting through successfully at 100% success rate, okay? I've never seen anyone failing before. It might take more time following my, my style because my style is no shortcut, okay? There is no shortcut. You have to follow each and every steps in this diagram, all right? So here we have PhD proposal and PhD thesis. I've split into two different uh, stages already, okay? So there is a direct split here. Proposal consists of step one to step six. You have to complete it in order to achieve a phenomenal proposal, right? If you're very new, okay, how many of you here are at the starting stage of research proposal? How many of you here are, have already written your proposal? How many of you here finishing your thesis? Do comment. You can say start proposal or thesis in the comment column, okay, so that I will know the mix today, the audience we have today, all right? So click start. Uh, type in start or proposal or finishing stage of your current study, okay? So, while have waiting for that, we have here uh, Vikravan, v v sorry, Virakwan 
any tips on critical review research method example to find out a suitable method for research from your chapter 2 you should be able to identify the right method for you okay from your literature review when you're referring to the study when you're reading analyze their method are they using quantity quality experimental modeling what are they doing okay so from that basis you will be able to understand what you can use as a method okay all right so we have many uh, responding already preparing for phd uh, start or start okay start uh, start and so on. So there are many responses here. So based on your stage now, based on your current uh, uh, um, step now, you can look at here what you need to do next. So let's say you are at the starting stage. You must first write a 10 pages proposal. You must. Don't go straight to chapters 1 to 3. Don't. Please don't. Okay. Because when your supervisor tells you that your topic is wrong or it's not within his interest or her interest or they say you're completely wrong, if you never do this, you go straight to this, then you have to scrap the whole thing. This is usually around 60 to 80 pages. Okay? This is usually around 60 to 80 pages. You don't want to scrap 60 to 80 pages of proposal. You don't, you don't ever want to do that. All right? So, in order to avoid that, what you do? Very simple. You write a 10 pages proposal, which consists of um, introduction, background, problem statement, RORQ, um, uh, significance, literature review, theory, framework, uh, solution. I mean, when I say framework, it means solution, your method, and so on and so forth. Once you have all that, your supervisor has already have a clue what you're talking about. Okay? And based on that, you can prepare. Okay? And continue to write your chapters 1 to 3. Once all of that is done, make sure you carry out proofreading because no matter how groundbreaking your uh, proposal is, if the language is not clear, I'm not telling you English is bad, but generally, if your language is not clear, if it's not clear, then no one will be able to understand your magnificent work. So I would always suggest to carry out proofreading first before you prepare for your defense training, PowerPoint, and so on. And after your proposal defense, please, please, please immediately complete your defense corrections. Don't wait for kingdom to come. Don't wait for six months, one year. You want to finish as soon as possible. How long are you guys going to drag on if you're just going to leave your corrections standing, hanging there? Don't. Immediately finish carry out the connections okay then you will finish all these phases from here onwards it's data collection analyzing completing chapters four and five under step number nine you will come you will take document from your information from here information from here and information from here you'll combine all and to produce step number nine chapters one to five you have to further expand update literature and so on make sure you do this proofreading stage because you don't want to offend your external examiner trust me if the language is not okay, they cannot understand what they're trying to do, they're going to make your life very, 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 very tough. I've already given remark of timeline here, how long typically it should take. And then you prepare for Viva and go for your Viva and then you finish your correction somewhere here. Okay. So that is the actual flow. And then I've also in this diagram, the only diagram in the world, I can tell you that actually gives you the stage where you can extract journals, when you can start writing journals. Okay. All right. How do we normally assist in these stages? That is our four different modes, okay? If you have written document, you have proposal, you have your paper publication already, you're not sure if you're good enough, I mean, the document is good enough, you want more comments, you want more thorough ad review and so on. These two would be the best services for you. Content commenting, which we're going to come out blasting with massive amount of comments for you. And then if you don't understand, you want more guidance, you want to actually understand how to resolve the issue, I would suggest online coaching together with this. If you have never written anything, you have not started, you're at the very, very early stage at step one here, then I would definitely suggest comprehensive consultation or content editing for special cases directly, okay? So this is how normally as proofreading by UK PhD will assist uh, masters and PhD students, all right? So now coming to literature review database again. Okay, um, the most highly respected database in the world is Clarity Analytics. Okay, that is the Ferrari of everything. So if you're always referring to high impact factor paper from JCR, you are on the right track. Okay, I'm not saying you're gonna, you are wrong. Okay, all web of science journals are indexed in JCR. Go with the highest impact factor, but you must need, you must have an account. Okay, how if you don't have an account? There's something called Sci Hub. 
Okay, don't tell that loud. Okay, I never tell that to you. I never told that to you. I never told that. Okay, I never mentioned that right now. But there is something called Sai Hub for you to go and check out. Okay, all right. So uh, that is something you can use to download papers. But most of the papers nowadays are open access. You can download it for free as well. Uh, or you have an alternative solution, which I just mentioned to you. If you don't know how to use it, I'm not going to share that with you on Facebook Live. Okay, they will, they will, they will slaughter me if I did that. So um, you can always PM me. I can sort of guide you how to how to make use of that. Okay, uh, this is where you go and download all ISI papers. Okay, but my favorite is always Google Scholar because you know why? When you go to Clarivate, you only get ISI papers. You don't get because Scopus papers are not all indexed in ISI, not indexed in Web of Science, not all of them. All right. So what do you do? You go to Google Scholar. Google Scholar gives you Scopus. ISI, uh, PubMed, Science Direct, Springer, whatever you want, MDPI, whatever you want, everything is in Google Scholar as long as you know what to search for and what exactly you want. Because there are also scam journals in Google Scholar, there is also rubbish in Google Scholar, there is also unindexed journals in Google Scholar. So you don't want to mistakenly download the wrong paper and read it and cite that as the as the primary paper in your problem statement, then you will be slotted during your Viva. Okay, so be careful of what you download. Google, Google Scholar is basically a pile of everything given to you. You have to use the magnet to extract and take what you want. Okay, all right. So let me show a bit of Google Scholar to you. All right, Google Scholar is very good. Okay, so you have small, let's, let's say, let me just use a quick one. Okay, small, medium enterprises. All right, so small, medium enterprises is basically uh, just just a, a very quick one just to show you guys, all right? What I normally will do, okay, what I normally will do is I will go according to time range here. I don't like to go and read very old papers, especially if I'm writing a new issue. I'm working on a new issue. I would like to read the most latest paper, okay? Chronology, that means from the newest to the oldest. So I will go since 2022, okay? I will read all these papers since 2022. Then once I already found all the papers that I want, I want more, then I go since 2021. If I already read all the papers, then I go 2020, 2020, and that's it. I won't put anything. So you'll get all the 2020 papers. All right, you can see here, 2020 and onwards. Or if you want to say, I only know 2020, then you can put 2020 here. Then you'll get only 2020, you see? All this, only 2020, all right? Then let's say you want further. You want to go 2019. Okay, fantastic. Then you go only 2019, right? Then there is also at one search, which you can put in all the other information that you want with all of the words, with exact phrase, with at least one of the words, without the words, where my words occur, written articles authored by public. Let's say you want papers only by Elsevier. Then you can type Elsevier here, okay? Example. So you type Elsevier only. These are all Elsevier, you see? So that's how you can play around with the advanced search. Okay, you can do a lot of things with advanced search. Now, you can also use boolean and and every other thing. For an example, here you can use the use of double quotation. Okay, double quotation means it will be those exact words that will come out. Okay, so um, let's say I use double quotation, small medium enterprise. Sorry, um, double quotation. Small, medium, enterprises. So it will be that exact phrase. Oh, so, sorry, my bad. Okay, so here, let me close this fellow. So this will be small, medium, enterprises. Exact phrase. Okay, all right. So you can see that. Then there is also another way of searching title abstract key. Okay, title abstract key. So title abstract key is... You go here, you type title, abstract key, small, medium enterprises. That means what? That means, let's say you are working on small, medium enterprises. That is your primary research study. But there could be any other papers that just mention small, medium enterprise somewhere along the line. It's not their main study, but they can say, uh, okay, machines will be used in uh, small, medium enterprises. That The main study is the machine, not small, medium enterprises. But your study primarily focus on focuses on uh, small medium enterprises so what you can do you can say title word abstract and the keyword is in title and abstract the keyword 
small medium enterprises that means this study primarily focuses on small medium enterprises in the title and in the abstract so you get only those papers that's how you can play around with this okay so we have a question here let's look at this question we have a question from ross hi doctor can you suggest how to create a table of contents topic subtopic for literature review chapter two i actually did it's on my facebook all right if you go to my facebook uh, if you go through uh, uh, my effective academic writing group, just scroll through. You will find a new table of content I get from Dr. Naim's thesis for you to refer to. Okay. All right. Then um, next one would be use this particular bracket for exact phrase. Okay. Exact phrase. Sometimes you'll have comma, full stop and so on. You can use that for exact phrase. Question mark you can use for woman, woman, plural, singular kind of problem. So you can put W-O-M. Question mark. It will show all the title with W-O-M-E-N and W-O-M-A-N. So you don't need to be worried saying that uh, woman entrepreneurship example. Okay. So you don't need to worry about writing W-O-M-E-N. You'll be like, what happens if there's W-O-M-A-N in certain title? So you do this. You can just put W-O-M, question mark, space, entrepreneurship. Okay. Clear so far all of you? You can follow. Any questions so far, please ask. And then comes all the Boolean, okay? And or is and uh, not is. And or is mostly used. There is also uh, no. I think you can use no as well. Uh, but most commonly used one is and and or. All of you clear. All of you can follow. I can see a very sustained number of viewers not, not moving up and down. I can see you guys are focusing 100%. Now, if you have not tagged your friends, please go and tag your friends because you've got more interesting things upcoming. Coming up, we're going to share another template and make sure you hit the share button. And I see very little likes. I only have 54 likes so far. Okay, I'm sharing the most essential information for you guys. Come on, give me more likes, guys. Come on. Huh? All right. So, uh, okay, some of the latest papers for reading. Okay, so my, my, my way of uh, doing things is that I always promise that my uh, clients always get a lot of citations. So I always share their papers whenever they publish papers. It's just a value-added service for them. And also... I bring it out to you all the latest papers that are coming up in your own area, okay, in your own segment, okay. So PLOS One recently published one of the paper from uh, Dr. Etty, ISIQ1 Impact Factor 3.24. It's an empirical paper. If you're interested in diabetic-related study, you can go and have a look at this. It's on public health. Then we have uh, um, um, another paper from UTM, some of colleagues from UTM, Engineering Failure Analysis, ISIQ1 Impact Factor 3.114. Empirical paper as well. If it's related to you, please go and read and cite. We have one more paper from Dr. Kasim, a good friend of mine. ISIQ2 Impact Factor 1.47 empirical paper as well. It's an empirical nexus between financial and psychological entrepreneurial characteristics and its analogy to entrepreneurship financial performance. A very good paper to read. Okay. One more is my own paper. Oof, I just published one two weeks ago. All right. Along with my other colleagues, a very good friend of mine, Parvez. Open innovation of institutional investors and higher education system in creating open approach for SDG for quality education. You know what's the best part about this paper, this particular paper here? Not because it's my own paper, but I always love when concept papers being published in high, good, high impact journals. All right. So this is a Scopus Q1 paper, scoping review based concept paper. There is no data, no empirical evidence, no data collected. It's just a simple conceptual paper. That was written fantastically well, and we got it published in one and a half months, all right, in MDPI Open Innovation Journal, all right. Next one is, this is another recent journal, RSC at once, Royal Society of Chemistry, ISIQ1 Impact Factor 3.36 Narrative Review Paper. In case if you're interested, go and have a look at this paper. This is an effort of our publication consultation and paraphrasing and proofreading, okay, all right. Okay, how far can such string go? Many people ask me, Doctor, how far do you want us to search systematic review? How much more to search? <laughs> Here is an example, an actual published paper. This is one search string in Scopus. Okay, if you think how far you can go, that is the farthest you can go. Okay, crazy, right? That is the amount of things you can search. Prevent, delay, reduct. You see, reduct or hashtag here, systematic review, meta-analysis, lifestyle change or lifestyle modification or lifestyle adaptation or lifestyle intervention, lifestyle therapy, lifestyle treatment. So you must understand and remember all your keywords. Okay, low salt, behavior treatment, fast. This is just an example to show you how long a search string can be for effective searching okay and when you write a paper or when you have appendix in your in your thesis make sure you add your keyword like this it shows high credibility of your search strategy people will know that you're not to mess with you know exactly how to search all right okay 
So I hope that is clear. Okay, one more template for you to use when you do literature review. This is something I created, I think, a couple of months ago. Also, I shared in uh, on Facebook. Also, I shared on my Telegram group. This is a literature review summary sheet. Okay, want to download? You guys know exactly where to download. Go to my Telegram group. Okay, make use of it. If you some of you missed out on the Telegram group link, here is the link again for you to go and join and download. Again, click on the pin message you will get this uh, document. What is this? Once you are reading what we normally do when we download the paper, we will save. Okay. What happens after you save the paper? Guess what? After you save, never open. Don't know where the paper is. It's in some folder sitting for the past three months. I have no time. Okay. Which is a normal thing. Okay. Which is a normal thing happens even to me. All right. All of us have the same problem. Do you guys face the same problem? Do you guys, let me ask you guys, do you guys save a paper and then never open after that be honest okay answer in the comment column i want all of you to answer in the comment column do you guys literally download the paper and save but never open okay never open answer in the comment column let me see let's see what we get <laughs> okay, all right. So be honest, guys. Be honest here, all right? Thank you, Sohel. Thank you for joining us from Korea. Very nice to have you. Okay, be honest. Okay, it's a joke, but be honest. How many of you... Because I'm going to give you a solution how to avoid that. Okay, a solution I always give people. I'm always doing halfway. So many hundred papers. <laughs> okay, come on. Yes, Cairo, all right? Tend to forget its existence. There you go. Read half through. All right. Yep. Sometimes I found the same paper I've saved when doing the next search. Okay. That is why you must use my checklist. When you use my checklist, what happens is you will be forced to read the paper instantly. Okay. And um, when you when you when you go through my checklist, there is a question asking: Is the paper relevant for you to read or not? When the paper is not relevant, immediately open a folder or open a library in EndNote or Mendeley, save that paper, okay, and call it useless library. So before you download the next paper, you can always check in the library: Is this paper downloaded before or not? Okay. Now once you download, don't save the paper. Okay. Don't save the paper. There you go. One more, Nurfahana. <laughs> it's a long time. I'm going to take this. Uh, yes, if that paper relevant to my study before, yes, I download all papers, but never read it. Okay, I'm not going to say you guys are wrong. Okay, that is wrong to say because I do the same. I do the same. Okay, everyone else will do the same. Let's be honest with each other. All right, I'm not going to say that I'm some saint. I read all my papers. All right, but having said that, I read more than thousand two hundred papers during my PhD. Okay, the reason that I can publish so many and I'm very good at literature review is because I read so many. If you don't read, you confirm for sure 100% going to have issue in your PhD. So you must make sure you read. And how to avoid this problem of saving and not opening? Very simple. Download the paper, open it immediately. Don't save the paper. Don't save. And you save, you will, you will like, you know, I saved it already. Who cares? I'll go back one day after one or two years. I'll go back and read. Who cares? Do it. No, no. When you open, don't save it. So what happens when you read? You go check my checklist. You read through. You start filling up this template right here. Okay, it's actually right here. You, you see this template right here? Ah, right there. You see the template there? You start filling up in that template. Okay. I can't find the template. Please share again. Uh, okay, if you go back to my Telegram group, if you keep clicking this, you will eventually come across that uh, sheet. Okay, let me just do a quick one. Yeah, quick one. I know it's a bit troublesome, but I have no choice. This is the best place for me to share everything. This is a new one. This is proposal abstract template. Okay, this is a new one. You can download the file here. Okay, if you're interested. Um, let me just go a quick one. Yeah, let me just show you. You have to keep clicking, clicking, clicking. It's a clicking game, unfortunately. But Telegram is very good because it's very open. Ah, yeah, I just missed it. I just missed it. Give me a moment. I just missed it. Uh, literature review matrix. Any one of you wants to know how to do? See, I've got many different topics here. Um, let me just see if I can get it back or not.
No, this is literally your database. Sorry, this is not the sheet. I guess. Um, no, I have to keep clicking. Sorry. Just give me a quick one. Okay, this is problem statement template. Okay, in case if you want problem statement template, this is a problem statement template. Um, Okay, this is the problem statement template file. If you want to download, just go and click this. This is the PDF file, seven steps to write problem statement. This is the statistical uh, database for you to go and download if you're interested. Then you have... Um, just stay with me one moment. I'll show you. Lots of information here. Okay, there you go. Literature review summary. It's here for you to download. Let me just tag it for you so it will make your life easier. I've already tagged it. You can go and download in my Telegram group, okay? Or on my Telegram group, whichever. Okay, so once you read it, I've already split it. Title, authors, introduction, theory, variables, methodology, analysis, findings, potential gap. I've given an example from this paper. It's a 14.8 impact factor journal, Elsevier. I've read this paper, I've done the summary for you just to give you an example. So you can go and download it, all right? You can go and download it. Uh, it's not Research Corner, it's not. It's um, my group, it's uh, Dr. Tawa's group. It should be this, is it not? Um, let me just share this link as well, it's not. Okay, this, this is the right one. Okay, this is the right one. I've shared again, one more link. Check out that link. Okay, I've shared one more link. Let me just print it. Um, oh, I can't pin it. Okay. Ah, I can, I can. I can. Let me pin the comment. All right. I've already pinned the comment. You guys can have a look. Okay. So, uh, next one. Okay. We're almost towards the end already. Uh, what videos to watch for journal? I've, uh, I think I've never shown you the playlist that I have. Okay. On my Facebook. There's a whole big playlist that you can go and watch videos from. Um, some of the important class for today that you can go and watch the related videos. Paraphrase for fast thesis journal writing. Systematic Review and Prisma 2020, Step-by-Step -step Review Paper Writing, Writing PhD Research Proposal by Dr. Tawa. So all of these are my videos. Where to go and find these videos? Um, okay. If you go to Proofreading by UK PhD page on Facebook, you, get, you go and click Videos. All right. Now we are live. You can see here. And here is here are all my videos you can go and watch. Okay. All right. Okay, so that is where you can uh, go and watch all the videos, all right? So now, uh, power of paraphrasing. This is something I really want to uh, share, okay? This is something I really want to share. This is a thesis that recently graduated as well, okay? And you can see from here what kind of steps we take to assure that the thesis goes through a rigorous proofreading, paraphrasing, editing, and structuring process, okay? So it goes through intense drilling. It goes through critical comments. It goes through even caption editing. And that is the level of depth that we go through for paraphrasing, proofreading, editing, and structuring. Okay. And as usual, the offer still stands. This ultimate thesis package up to 30% off for proofreading, translation, formatting services. And we are the one and only language warranty provider, including for your journal as well, language warranty. Okay. All right. So for those who haven't downloaded, wait first, don't go yet. Haven't downloaded Dr. Naim's thesis yet. I will again email it to you. If you have requested before, don't worry. Don't, 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 don't request again because you're already in my database. I'm going to resend to you back. Don't worry. But you have not requested yet. Okay. This is a very good thesis that produced SLR papers and 15 other journals and graduated before time within two years and seven months. Okay. Dr. Naim's thesis, he agreed to share. You can use this as a sample thesis for yourself. Okay. If you have not downloaded this, you have not received from me, you can go and request on my website. Okay. Very simple. Just go to proofreading by UK PhD, uh, proofreading by PhD.com. This is the website. Okay. Let me, uh, okay. Um, I can't share the link at the moment, but probably I'll share later. Okay. Um, you can scroll down all the way. You can request it here. You can fill up this form. Proofreading by PhD.com. Don't forget, huh? proofreading. Let me just type it down quickly. Proofreading by PhD.com. Okay. I've shared it already. You can go to the website. Go all the way down and request for the thesis. Remember, if you have requested, don't request again because then it will be spamming for your own email. Okay, then I'll, I'll send it multiple times to you. You don't want that.
okay so if you have requested don't request again if you have not requested go and request now i've already given the link down there proofreading by phd.com go and request for this thesis i will send it to you okay so these are some of the free webinars that is coming up at university level if you are part of we have four different classes graduate before time class high impact public uh, pu publishing class systematic re review class and phd proposal and pu publication class comes together these are all free classes and these are all the dates with the universities okay i'm packed until december as i said november december some of the dates i haven't updated yet but you can contact your own university to um, join the talks if you want to organize one for your own university please get in touch with me we can discuss it out okay it's completely free if you're interested in malaysia you want to organize one please do let me know okay so this is where we are located in cyberjia in case if you want to meet me you want to have an online meeting give me a call this is where we are these are google review you can see here uh, we are located in cyberjia feel free to come and visit us okay all right when the covid numbers reduces if you want to have a meeting nowadays i take more online meeting all right okay so on that note thank you very much to everyone for joining me today don't forget to go and join my other classes very simple all you need to do is go to my facebook okay uh, scroll down here click events and you can check out all the upcoming classes okay so 4th april go another class 18 april 11 may 12th may and 30th may you can just click going for all the classes and you can register yourself by just clicking going all right that's all you need to do so that's all from me today thank you very much hope the class was helpful to you all wish you all the best with your class sorry uh, wish you all the best with your phd and masters um see you also thank you you guys were great okay oh sorry if there's any question at all you guys can ask uh, when it, it comes up in my comment column uh, oh thank you thank you uh thank you uh shamshida thanks a lot appreciate that please go and watch learn more it's a very niche class niche area niche things that are going on that you cannot get knowledge anywhere else you don't need to pay for it there is no um, fee for it just use make use of it hope all of you will benefit from it okay so thank you all again thank you very much uh, wish you all the best uh, if you want to look up for any services you can always go to the website proofreading by phd.com okay or you can always uh, whatsapp me okay so thank you guys thanks a lot take care see you all soon bye bye make sure you go register for the classes okay thank you thanks a lot bye bye